Okay, greetings and welcome everyone to our session today titled In This Moment, uh, the panel Monuments, Memorials and Movement with Sean Dunwoody and Arturo Hoyt. Today's session is part of Geneseo's month-long celebration honoring Black History Month. As part of our efforts of becoming an anti-racist college, these series of events and sessions planned and organized by the Anti-Racism and DEI Subcommittee of the President's Commission on Diversity and Community will hopefully spark discussions, reflections, and actions as we work toward this vision of anti-racism. For the comprehensive list of events offered this month, please visit the Geneseo events calendar uh, for Black History Month provided right now in the chat. Before we begin, we begin, we ask our participants that you mute your mics during the presentation. We do, however, encourage you to use the chat feature to provide questions for the presenters. We have a lot of time at the end for a Q&A. We ask that all questions and comments are grounded in respect. No disrespect towards the presenter, moderator, or other participants will be tolerated. While we haven't had any issues with this so far this month, we do reserve the right to remove participants if these expectations are violated. And with that, I will turn it over to our wonderful presenters. Hi, everyone. Oh, I got to say, I, gotta, I know you're going to say something, Amanda, but I say, I got to say thank you, other Amanda. That was fantastic. That I've never heard anyone actually give that whole you know, layout of how a Zoom should flow. I think you should, I, I need you to do that every time I do a Zoom. Uh, that was awesome to tell people I'm gonna kick your ass out of here if we don't like what you say. <laughs> All right, back to you, Amanda. Um, thank you, Amanda, for the introduction and um, welcome everyone. I'm really grateful that Geneseo has uh, presented us with this opportunity. I see a few names who were here last week too. Um, so welcome for this presentation from In This Moment. I have an early draft. I've, my house has eaten my originals, but I have an early draft of Sean's book here with Arturo's amazing, incredible photographs in them. And um, we wanna have a conversation um, or both are to the area go. Sean's got the real thing. Oh, everybody's got the real thing. <laughs> um, we we're going to have a conversation. Um, both Arturo and Sean are Rochester artists. Um, Arturo is a photographer. Sean is known for his, um, outdoor art right now, um, and installations, um, and kind of monumental art. And, and so we wanna have a conversation framed around, not just in this moment and this project, which really seeks to upend the phrase in this moment and, and challenge people to view what's happening now from a point of um, continuance and, and challenges people to recognize that this is a, the challenges that we are facing now are challenges that black folk have been talking about and facing for a long time, um, generations. And um, the work that Sean and Arturo are doing in their art is um, an important part of that contemporary conversation, but also a link in the history of, of that conversation and, and um, the, they stand, their work stands um, on the shoulders of many artists um, and activists who came before them. So Sean and Arturo. Um, Amanda Chester, if I can interrupt for just one second. Yes. Sure. For any of those that um, were not here in last week's session, um, I'd love it if you could introduce yourself and um, talk about your role in the project too. Oh, I can do that, yeah. I wouldn't have if you hadn't slowed me down. Thank you. Um, I am <laughs> Amanda Chestnut. I'm a professor at Geneseo. I also teach at St. John Fisher College. Um, I am also a Rochester artist. I graduated from Visual Studies Workshop. I have my MFA through there. Um, I am the curator of In This Moment. So my role in the project was um, when Jean, our project coordinator, came to me, my role was to help select the leaders that we were going to highlight, the artists and writers who were going to work with them, and then to encourage those teams in how they would structure their stories. I don't want to tell any artist how they're going to make their work, but I, I did want to provide a framework and, and permission and support as well for the artists to really challenge um, 
what it was they were feeling in this milieu of people speaking about blackness without actually saying it out loud and 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 give all of the folks who participated in the project a space where they could say it out loud um, um, safely and beautifully and, and be supported in that. Um, so Sean was one of the first folks I asked to be a leader and Arturo was one of the first photographers we asked as well. Um, and, and we're so, we're so grateful that they were both able to participate. And I think it worked out well, that partnership along with Chris's story. Um, Sean and Arturo, do you want to each tell everybody a little about, bit about yourselves? Uh, I, yeah, yeah, you go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead, because I'll okay. get into it when I start talking. All right, so my name is Arturo Hoy. I'm a photographer. Been shooting over 10 years, way over 10 years. Um, I'm looking down because I'm also going to be doing some screen sharing, so I'm trying to set that up. So it's, uh, excuse me for that. But um, uh, I kind of just uh, was, was excited about the project early. I was excited before you guys even had a vision of what you're actually going to do is still like an, an idea form but I just saw that there was potential in it and that there was going to be something to do during this time that would that could work out as something positive so that's what got me excited and so I was ready as soon as soon as I talked to Gene it was just like uh I was ready but I had to wait I actually had to wait on everybody else's schedule but I was excited so um and things came out pretty good like they didn't come out the way i wanted um because you always have the idea version of, of what you want but uh they can't it came out better than i expected i should say um so so it came out even better um as it as it evolved because it, it did evolve everything changed and evolved even the design you said you have the the one of the early versions the design evolved everything evolved and, and it came out great and uh so i was proud to be a part of this project. Um, I'm proud to, to, it was easy, I felt for me because I knew Sean, so I, I could, I had a perspective on, on what he does um, that somebody that might not have met him might not have, um, just because I've, I've had conversations with him just about about his work and how he feels about it and, and the, uh, the, the, the ups and downs of it. So, so I had a perspective that maybe a new person might not have got. And, and uh, as far as me personally, like I, I shoot um, some portraits and fashion uh, photography editorial, but uh, I've and I do a documentation of, of things, events of, um, of art in this case. Um, and my goal is just to, to make images that people can use or uh, seek to, to put out there to, for their, to, just for their understanding, like to understand the moment, to understand a feeling. That that's my goal is to to for the viewer to take something from the image. And that's that's me in a small nutshell. <laughs> All right, so go ahead, Sean. All right, that's coming up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. That was interesting. You want to hit your hit your mute? Yeah, I'm getting a little. Fit. That was interesting to see the delay though. That was interesting. You're talking and the words are just moving. You stop talking, the words are just flowing. That was interesting to see. I was mesmerized by that. Um, uh, I guess, well, I was gonna get into it, but I guess I should introduce my, my, my connection to uh, in this moment right here. I guess that's, that's the whole point. Uh, I, I uh, got a message from Amanda uh, on Twitter. and She was like, hey, you wanna do this thing? And after, you have to realize when I when I get a message, I read the first couple of lines, and I'm like, whatever, I don't know. Uh, if it's <laughs> if it sounds good in the first sentence, I'm on board. If I got to read a paragraph, I, I just I was like, I'll save it for later. So for those of you who ever try to reach out to me, don't ever send me a paragraph because I want to read the first three lines, and I'm just like, okay, I'm in. So I was like, okay, I'm down. I had no clue what this was whatsoever. I had no clue what this was. Um, uh, I, actually, our two had more meetings with with Amanda and and and, and Janine to make things happen. I was just like, whatever. What, if you ask me to, if Amanda asked me to do something, I'm down. Hey, um, I got to talk to you about that uh, that other thing, Amanda. I got to. We got to. We got to. I'll, I'll message you about that uh, committee. Yeah. Um, but that's all. okay. All right. <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah, I was down, whatever. If it's about, you know, supporting uh, a movement, if it's, it's about supporting people, supporting a movement, you know, and I appreciate that they, they actually, uh, that I was one of the first, but you know, my story is based upon the, the, the story of my ancestors. That story, my story is based upon the story of those who, who led the way, who, who, br who brought me information to do what I do. Folks like uh, Dr. David Anderson, uh, great, great mentor, uh, and, and led me down the path to understand the connection of Frederick Douglass to Rochester. And, and that's why Douglass is one, of, is one of my heroes. If you see him, he's actually right behind me as a superhero. Uh, and so when I see uh, that, this, that this, young, this young brown woman wants to do something, and, and express herself because it is by it is by the movement of our brown women that thing that the shit gets done. Uh, I, I I swear a lot, so I hope there's no hey, Doctor Mayor. I hope there's no. <laughs> I, hope there's, <laughs> I hope there's nobody offended by that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Christians or Mormons or whoever out there. Uh, Muslim. Uh, so yeah, uh, it was. I was just on board, and I love their mission to actually get it into people's hands. I think that was important to get it into schools, to get it into young people's hands, because that, that kind of aligns with uh, my driving mission as to what I do, which I think I'll get into later is, you know, uh, be the change that you want to be, you know what I mean? You, you know, be what you want, what you want the world to be. It will become what you want to be if you make yourself become that. So I, I applaud Amanda on this movement to do this and celebrate these, these stories of of, of Black Rochester, Brown Rochester, African American Rochester, the stories of people of Rochester is important. Uh, you know what I mean? America wouldn't be America if it wasn't for uh, Brown people who actually built this damn country. So that's why Black Lives Matter. All right. So what are we? What are, okay. So what are we? What are we doing here, man? So now we go into our presentation thing, and what are we doing? If you have slides you want to share or st stuff you wanted to share, Arturo said you had, you had, you said you had slides and, and there were definitely a couple of topics you wanted to touch on. Um, okay. If you guys want to go into those things, I'd love to kind of guide through and ask some questions about them as they're happening. All right, sweet. I'll just jump into it. How about that? Because we, we got a lot. Of, all right. We got a lot of time I got to kill here. So I might just sing a song or something. But uh <laughs> no, but I want to talk about, it's about monuments and movements. And so um, with, with, with the unrest of, of 2020, you know, we, we, we've been quarantined, we've been, we've been uh, caught up, we've been, we're angry, we're pissed. There's a lot of things going on. Um, and we've seen monuments be removed, we've seen monuments being replaced. And I, I, I kind of believe that, you know, things need to be removed. And, and with, with public art, uh, I think it should address the public in which it, it, it resides in. Uh, it's great to have, you know, Andrew Jackson, but that time has changed and it should address the people and populations that are there. So as you talked a lot about me uh, doing, you know, outdoor public work, I think it should change. I'm waiting for, I, I love the day when someone paints over something of, of, that I've done and, and does something else. Uh, like all these photographs that Arturo shot, uh, in this in this moment book, which I still I still haven't actually read the thing. I'm sorry, but it's <laughs> but all the photographs in this book. This building no longer exists. It, 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 a friend of mine, Mark Cleary, it literally burnt to the ground. And I saw the video when you see the facade of the building fall to the ground and smash in the street. But the firemen have to remove themselves because there's no save in this building. So that means well, what was near and dear it. it, 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 it the physical connection doesn't matter any longer. It's about how you retain it here in your heart. And I wanna, I wanna explain how I got to the point of doing public artwork because that, that wasn't my original thing. Uh, you know, growing up in the Northeast side of Rochester, um, still, still living there, I, um, uh, you know, I always wanted to be an artist, a creator, you know, I was always into superheroes, as you can see that's behind me. Uh, and so I wanted to, to be able to, to create that sort of change and do these sort of things. I always have to tell this story. So excuse me, I just love telling this story. Uh, you know, when I was about five years old, you know, I wanted to be Spider-Man. Uh, and I'm pretty sure everybody knows who Spider-Man is. Uh, so I don't have to explain that. But I wanted to be Spider-Man really bad. So what, it, what, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I just read that. Sorry, you distracted me. Don't be doing that. It's like, a, you know, shiny thing, shiny thing. I look at that. So. Uh, so what I wanted to do was be a superhero. So I, I, I went, I wanted to be Spider-Man. So what I did, went around the house on the, on the, along the windowsill's basement and I collected, you know, uh, dead spiders. And when I collected those dead spiders, I would put them in a cassette case. In case some of you don't know what a cassette case is, this is it. Look at this, this is vanilla ice cassette tape. Look at that, who knows that one right there? What an actual cassette, look at that. 
uh, <laughs> I do have a boom box that, that actually works play <laughs> I'm going to unmute myself so you can hear me cackle. <laughs> okay. It's got MC okay. Hammer and Vanilla Ice. Uh, and so within the, in the, we see this little area here, you can stuff, you can I put my spiders in there. So I was going to crush them up. I crushed them up and I got a sewing needle out of my mom's sewing kit. And uh, I wanted to become Spider-Man. So I figured I would inject myself with spider blood. But Spider-Man has radioactive blood, radioactive Spider-Man. So I needed radioactivity. So I figured this old cord from a lamp that was frayed and cut off at the end was radioactivity. If I plug it into the wall and, and I give it a, a radioactive charge and I stick that blood into my body, I'll be Spider-Man. So as I uh, got my sewing needle sitting in my cassette case and I'm getting ready to plug it into the wall, my mom's like, boy, what's wrong with you? You're crazy. And so don't kill yourself. So luckily, whew, thank you, Jesus, I didn't actually plug that in and become Spider-Man. So I had to find other ways to be a superhero. Uh, that I wanted to be. And so I started creating characters. I, I you know, I, I wanted to draw and create and become this sort of this connection point, this hero is to send messages. Later on, we fast forward in life, I ended up, uh, uh, you know, attending uh, college and, and meeting people. And uh, I got into uh, more fine art. And so a lot of the artwork I was displaying and showing and discussing at universities and, and various other places uh, was about the, the struggles of, 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 of African Americans, Africans in America, black people and brown people in America, some of the struggles that we're having. And so I was using a, a medium of assemblage where I was taking uh, pieces of found objects on the street and piecing them together. Uh, it's kind of like collage for those of you who don't know what assemblage is, you're just using three dimensional pieces. And I would piece them together to tell the story because I looked at those objects that were on the ground as I viewed myself uh, at the time. I felt people look over you and step on you. They spit on the ground, they step over a bottle cap, you kick a potato chip bag. Uh, but once you transform that, once you put it in a different light, it becomes beautiful. It becomes a piece of artwork. The same bottle cap of which you know you would spit on on the street now becomes glorified. So you can actually change and become something new. Uh, and those were sort of the messages I was instilling in sort of this assemblage uh, work that I was doing and, and talking, expressing um, um, uh, African American plight here or what was going on. And uh, I had one day when I was addressing an audience, and uh, the audience was all uh, mental and deficient. Uh, they were Caucasian audience, and so. <laughs> When I, when, I, when I looked at it, I said, okay, I had my Dave Chappelle moment. And for those of you who don't know what Dave Chappelle moment is, I will, I will say what that is. It was a moment when Dave Chappelle was, was taping one of his videos. He had the, 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 the good angel and the bad angel. And you know, they, there was a rap, they did the clap and everybody's laughing. But he said, one guy laughed in a way that made me realize, uh, what am I actually doing? And I had that same moment in that arena when I was addressing that audience. I said, are these people I'm talking to, are they actually going to go out and create some change? Are they going to do something? Or are they just like, oh, yes, he's the artist. It's fantastic. That was great to hear what he said. And I'll see you later. Let's go get our uh, lattes, Becky. That's what I had to figure out what it was about. So what I did was I said, you know, I'm no longer going to do this. I don't show at galleries anymore. I said, I need, to, I need to be what I wanted to see when I was 15 years of age and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. I need to be what I wanted to see. So I left that, that world and uh, went to the streets and started. I said, if I can't affect change in my neighborhood, what good is it me talking to these audiences who, who might not necessarily do a, a, a damn thing? Um, and so I started by addressing corner stores. Uh, and most corner stores are across from a bus stop. And uh, corner stores are advertising to you, you know, hot wings, uh, you know, uh, cold beer, cigarettes, lotto, EBT. Not saying anything's wrong with that. I like all those things. I like all those things. <laughs> not saying anything's wrong with that. But just this is what you're influenced with while you're waiting 15 minutes for the bus. And the advertisers know they got you for four seconds. So they can advertise to rock, you know, shout out to P. Diddy. They can advertise this drink that you need to have, these Philly Blitz that you need to have. Uh, so why can't we in, impose positive messages as people wait for the bus? And so I started doing that in corner stores to want to really celebrate that message. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to tell you just a story, and then I'm going to my, my direct presentation. Uh, you know, we're working on a, on a piece, uh, one of my earlier pieces, uh, it's now since been painted over, which it should change. Um, it's working on a piece on, uh, on Hudson and Dernan. For those of you who are on campus or don't know anything about the city of Rochester, Hudson and Dernan is where uh, uh, Officer Peterson was shot in the head and killed on that corner. And it was, it's a very hot drug spot. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of pharmaceuticals being distributed on that corner, if you know what I mean. And um, we, we, I'm working with a group of youth and we go to 
begin to paint this wall. We met with the store owner and uh, he said, you know, I want to tell people to believe in themselves. So we create this, this big letter that says, uh, it's B, you, B, leave <laughs> in yourself. But it was actually said in big letters that B, you. So you could see big you and you saw yourself. So while you waited directly across from the, uh, the, the, at the bus stop across from the corner store. And uh, one day we started painting it. Um, we started off with brown, painting it brown, painting these words in brown. Uh, next day we go to paint in because we ran out of brown paint. So we started painting it blue. Uh, and one of the cats that was, you know, doing his pharmaceutical business walked up and was like, yo, why are you painting that color? What's up with that? Why are you doing it blue? Uh, I was like, uh, what, what you mean by that? It's like, yo, we don't, we, we don't rep that color around here. Not understanding apparently that was supposed to be, you know, blood territory for you If you don't know, we don't know anything about bloods and crips. It's, it's uh, red and blue. Uh, you guys are all young and you've probably never seen boys in the hood either. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just like to make that reference. I like to slight boys in the hood in any conversation I'm talking about. Um, and so, uh, I was like, well, yo, is it, is it, is it bad? Do you not like what we're doing? What's going on? He's like, no, nah, it's all good, man. We're going to take, a couple, take a, couple, a couple of flicks in front of it later. It's all good. And I realized that people were engaged, right? So they're seeing this believe in you being painted on the wall. Uh, one of the moments where, where a mom walks by with her three kids, little boy, young little boy, youngest says, hey, mom, what does that say? And, uh, this, uh, and, and she says to her son, she says, believe in yourself. And that was a moment where the message could be delivered to someone else. So even though she was just reading off what it says, she actually told her son to believe in himself. And with, with those people that were doing their pharmaceutical exchanges, they were, you know, slapping up, be like, yo, you know, here it is. Go ahead, believe in yourself, yo, you know, and they were making the exchanges. So I realized that there is a way to actually connect and, and build community via public art and engage people. And, and thinking about what that means, what that, what, that, what that presence means, what that monument, that placement of an object means in the community. So uh, that's what led me down the path to really just being to think about community and, and having people find their own place or their own connection to a piece of artwork or a, a place. Reactivating a place was very important to me. So uh, this is where I'll jump into sort of my, why, why I find that you know, monuments need to change and they need to address who is there. So, Arturo, if you could just give me, share a screen for me. How do we do that? Can we do that? Give me a minute here. This is where technology I don't know very well and I'm not good at. So while I'm doing that, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look at all your faces like I'm watching the Brady Bunch. Here's a story of a guy on Zoom. Talking about monuments and movements here. They were all there gathered together. And yet I'm all alone. Until this one day that this brother was pulling up photos. So he could talk about the monuments he creates. And we all looked and we all waited. But then we all were okay. And that's why we're called the Zooming Bunch. Dun, 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 the Zooming Bunch. Dun, 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 dun. That's the way we became the Zooming Bunch. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, somebody's not in the head. <laughs> Do we have it? If we don't have it, that's okay. Okay, he's sharing it now. Sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. He's going to my folder right now. So this is, I just really want to bring those connections because I know when I went uh, uh, in an email conversation with, with David, I know that there's something that was created on campus that has been sort of, um, it, it was, it was a monument that people use to create and, and give messages on. So, uh, we'll, we'll click down on, uh, MIG 18 first, 18 first. We'll go to, uh, uh, 16 rather 16, go to 16, 16 right here. Yeah. We'll go to that. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, bring that sort of, I want to bring that sort of connection there where um, I think it's important to understand that uh, people were upset that it was painted over. I know that folks must have painted it with, with Black Lives Matter information on it. Uh, and I, I agree that, that that statement needs to be made and needs to be understood. It's completely understood by it. I also understand that things need to uh, evolve as things grow. Can we, you got it? I don't see anything. We just see your screen. 
Can you double click on it? Oh, sorry, fellas. Sorry, folks. I, we're just trying to figure this out. No. Sometimes you have to go stop the sharing and then go back to it. All right. Well, what, what we're seeing something here. Yep, I can That's see good. it. Yeah, we can see that. That's good enough. That's, we'll work with that. We'll work with that. That's all right. That's good, bro. No, you don't have to zoom in. That's good. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about, uh, just, just placement and things, what it, what it means to connect or try to connect. So this is a piece, uh, a sculptural piece that I did at uh, Abraham Lincoln School 22, which is on the corner of Hudson and Upper Falls. Um, uh, when I received the, the contract to do this, uh, you, you're all right, dude, that's it's good, that's good, we're good. When I received the contract to actually do this, um, it was about, of course, the school is named after uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln, a uh, uh, Caucasian male um, president. Uh, but I felt it was important, once again, trying to find those connection points with this, with this piece, with this monument, with this, with, this, with this art. I wanted to find a connection to the students who, who would be walking into that school building. 98% of them are going to be those of brown skin. So I wanted them to have a connection to someone or something besides just Abraham Lincoln and saying, all right, he's great but I have to walk underneath him. I have to walk underneath his name. I'm always going to be underneath him. Uh, and so I, I felt it was important to bring in the story, a stronger story of Frederick Douglass. So the focus on this piece, even though it's inside the school called Abraham Lincoln, I wanted the focus to actually be on Douglass. Uh, and that's why you can see on the quote, the bronze plaque on the side that says, uh, uh, it's easier uh, to build strong children than to repair broken men. And to tell the story of Douglas and find that connection to a black man who lived uh, in 25 years here in Rochester and had the power and prestige to actually meet with the president. president. And that story actually is on that plaque. And I'll, I'll give a brief synopsis of what it is. Uh, it was, you know, at the, it, 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 amidst the, uh, amidst this, you know, the civil war, sorry, I just got, <laughs> amidst the, the civil war and, and folks that want to sit down and meet with the president uh, President Lincoln. And so uh, they, folks have been waiting there for like days, three or four days. Um, and uh, Frederick Douglass walks in, one lone black man, first, first black man to walk into the door, not through a servant's entrance uh, that I know of, I will say. And uh, he walks up, hands his card to the clerk, uh, which says Frederick Douglass. And he takes that card to the office comes back a few minutes later and says, Mr. Douglas, the president will see you. Now he, you've got to realize people are upset. So I want, I want the students to understand the context of this, this, this lone uh, black man is allowed into the office before it, the whole filled womb of white men are allowed in there. So you know they got to be calling him all kinds of names uh, as he walks into the president's office. And when he walks into the room, uh, he extends his hand uh, to introduce himself to Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was seated at the time. He stands up. Abraham Lincoln is a very tall man. And, uh, and that's why I wanted to have him keep him seated. Sorry. <laughs> he stands up and extends his hand to Douglas and says, Mr. Douglas, I know who you are. And I wanted to show the power of what you can be in the midst of a situation of where there's actually enslavement. Uh, this, this gentleman, this man had the power to address the president and the president knew who he was. So I wanted to find the context in that area, in that school, to have these students to understand you are that powerful and you are that, you are that connected. So I really wanted them to understand that. So uh, next slide, please. Just click on the next thing, please. I put it on mine. So here's just some details of it. Next one, please. I just wanted them to be able to touch it. A lot of times we have art. Uh, that is not connected. And so uh, sometimes monuments and, and, and pieces are out of place and you can't really touch them. You know, you put this guy on top of a horse, which means I, I can't actually excel to that level. I can't be part of that. So I try to make, make the things that I do connected so that people can touch it. You can be a part of it. It is a part of you. It doesn't mean that this person is greater than you. They're on the same level as you and you can be them. It can be connected to them. Um, next slide, please. Oh, what is that? Oh, never mind. We'll skip that one. Uh, go to the, the enough, the first, the full, the full. Uh, go back. Right there. Yep, right there. All right. So uh, jump forward. So we're, 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 this is that I did that. I installed that sculpture in, in February. March 15th, we get hit with the shutdown. We're, 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 we're like, you know, sh shut, shut, shut shit down. Um, we're, we're, we're all quarantined. We're, we're, we're sitting in our homes. You know, people are fighting over toilet paper, for God's sakes. I don't know why you're fighting over toilet paper. Um, 
and we're all just, we're so broken, we're so hurt. Uh, we have uh, unrest going on, we have racial unrest going on. People are upset, people are angry. Stop killing black people. Stop, I'm tired of it. <laughs> You've been doing it for 400 plus years, stop it. Uh, we got a lot going on. And uh, as I sit in my, in my home, uh, I'm getting you know, emails and calls from you know, media outlets. They're, they wanna ask me, what, what do you have to say about that? What do you think? What, what do you think? What do you think about what's going on? And I don't even know how I ended up in that position where people are trying to ask me what I think and what can be done. And um, I, I didn't respond. I had no answer for anyone. Uh, I wasn't gonna speak until I had something to do. Uh, words are valuable, but I, I wanted some action. And while scrolling through uh, uh, Twitter, um, a friend of mine, Kwaje, who actually is the photographer and, and another one in, these, in this moment books, uh, he, he just posted the words enough. And so I said, that's exactly it. I've, I've had enough. I've had enough of this. Uh, and so I took to one of the walls. This is City Blue on Sayo Street. This, is, this wall has since been gone. It, it collapsed. And uh, I painted the wall black and painted the words enough on there on the wall uh in, in different shades of brown and so uh, i i wanted to have people a voice a way to connect a way to co be connected because we're, we're we're scared of our we're in a pandemic we're scared of uh, of covid uh, uh uh we're we're upset with with one another for whatever reason it may be uh we're mad at at, at, at police brutality there's a lot going on there's we, we've just had enough and so i said here it is instead of me saying something or giving some speech i want people to say what they feel they've had enough of is there, they've had enough of police brutality i've had enough of being quarantined i've had a, or, or they can say there is enough money to solve some issues in this world there is enough food to feed people and so I left out some chalk. I did a social media post. I said, here it is. This is for you to express what you feel, to share your stories, because I think we've all had about enough. And I, I, get, I, I tell you, in about two hours time, you can click on that first enough slide, Arco. Yeah, right there. It was filled up. Click on the next one. Uh, as you can see, people are just, you can click on it. Yeah, no, no, one right next to it. Yeah, people are just filling it up. Uh, this was within a couple of hours, me leaving chalk out. Um, and one of the things that I found was, was amazing that, or, or, or the connectedness or the, the, the uh, uh, you know, where people actually connecting with one another and sending out messages. I left that chalk out, but that one time and I never refilled it. But after the rain, uh, various other days, people still somehow chalk ended up on that wall and people had a way to express themselves. Uh, and connect with one another. And that became a point of contact uh, where people were actually engaged in different ways. It became, it, it became place activated. Uh, people would go there, they would read the message, want to understand what was going on. Uh, and I thought that was a, a, very, uh, a very valuable thing there, you know, that uh, the, the ethereal uh, essence of, of this artwork, it, it's going to be gone after it rains, you know, it's, it's public participation I felt was very valuable. Um, which fast forward to two weeks, after I did this, the city comes to me and says, all right, you know, DC did, you know, Black Lives Matter. Can we pull this off? Uh, if you can click on that Black Lives Matter on the street photo. Uh, it's, it's the one uh, right there, over. No, no, right there. No, no, next to that one. No, other way, other way, other way. Other, no, 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 no. Keep going. No, 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 to your, it's right there. It's, uh, no, the other way, other way, other way, other way, other way. Keep going the other way. Right there. There we go. All right, got it. Okay, so um, I was asked to do that. As, as you can notice, it is the color blue, so, but I'm gonna go through that. So uh, they call me up, they say, can we get this done? I was like, all right, we can do it. I was like, can we, in the original plan, it was, it was supposed to go over uh, on Main Street, over our river, okay? And so, and do you say, sort of the Black Lives Matter color is black and, and yellow. And so I tried to get uh, yellow paint, where it's like, we're gonna do this in a couple of days, can you hurry it up? I was like, okay, I'll get it. Uh, there wasn't enough yellow paint in the region to actually cover the ground, uh, yellow base. Uh, so I thought maybe I can do it in uh, green, there, which is uses the same yellow base, so it couldn't be done. So I thought, thought to myself, what could be done? You know, and this is this is where ancestry speaks to you. This is where the heart of of of, of your descendants will will chime in and step forward when you don't know where you need to go. And um, so I realized, you know, I understood that, you know, what, we we'll, we'll go with the color of blue. That's what I could get. Um, I could have done purple, but I went with the color blue because I realized it, it connected to ancient Kemet, 
uh, which which most folks uh, tend to call Europe, which would be the, the where the the connection I would find there over the river would be to ancient Kemet and the Nile River. Um, when it's depicted in hieroglyphs or in scrolls, the color blue is used, and the color blue is very very valuable and very important. And so I felt I can use this color blue as as connection to the Nile because the Nile flows south to north just as our Genesee River does. And I wanted to bring that black connection to ancient Kemet, the people who created the color blue um, to this issue. Then, then it was eventually moved to Court Street. Um, so uh, then once I painted, you know, people gave me flack because of whatever, you know, we you had the blue lives matter, even though no one's born blue uh, and you had the black lives matter debate. But uh, it was one of those things where if folks say, you know, why is it blue? But I wanted you to understand at this moment, it connects to our ancient past. It is, it is who we are. We create, we own the color blue and no one can take it from us. We created it. It belongs to us and no one can switch around and make us hate what we hate and don't want to be engaged in what we want to be engaged in, almost like our sort of our jazz fest where people flock to it. But it was created by the people that were depressed by an American society, looked for American music. It was created beneath their noses by the brown people of which they oppressed. But that's a whole nother story. <laughs> uh, so we get the Black Lives Matter painted on there, which was very fitting because two days before this, uh, two radio hosts were fired. Uh, for saying some uh, off the collar things, you know, people were acting inwardingly and they were fired. So it addressed also another one of our uh, most conservative uh, um, radio hosts on uh, in that building, which actually he is, he is kind of a friend of mine. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it really addressed stuff. So those media outlets pushed that out to their audience. So it actually had a, a great movement. It had a great movement to push it out to a, an audience that wouldn't otherwise actually see that or give a damn. Uh, so it was important. I see how, you know, the universe will give you uh, what you ask for if you want to create a message. But with me doing painting this Black Lives Matter on the street, uh, creating this, this micro monument or this timed monument, um, I told the city, if I'm going to do that, you see that little thing in the upper corner? Uh, I said, that's MLK Park. I said, if we're going to do that, we have to paint MLK Park, Martin Luther King Jr. Park. We're going to paint it black because people are going to need to know a message. So yeah, click on that, October, which would be great. No. Yeah, as you can tell, this is this is prior to it being painted. Uh, no, go back, go back, go back, go back to that. To those who just said, yep, yep, yep. Perfect. Click on that. Yep. So as for those of you who haven't been downtown or haven't seen it, this has been the spot for many years. Uh, it was created in the 70s. There's like a fountain I used to go to and jump in. There used to be concerts and everything. It's basically a huge amphitheater. And uh, one of the, the things I felt uh, when people were gathering, you know, uh, during the unrest uh, to, to, to spread their message, uh, or uh, as, as folks call a protest. When those folks would gather, you know, and a protest is actually based in art. You know, you have singing, you have dancing, you have chants, you have art on your, your protest posters. These are the things that people capture and they want to see. And there's a lot of energy. And uh, I, I, seeing this, I realize that once, you know, everyone's there and everyone's hyped and, and ready to make, do something, uh, action is there, all the, the, the tension, the, the, the energy is there. But once these gatherings are over, it dissipates. So how do we continue that energy? How do we keep people engaged? How do we keep that, that feeling? How do we create that monumental feeling uh, when people are not there? And so I felt like, let's paint this bowl black. So that way we can actually help to amplify people's voices because you know what? It is an amphitheater. So, um, I ended up painting the whole bowl black. Uh, I left some chalk out and I put a social post out and I said, hey, uh, here it is. There, here's where you can express yourself. Yeah, you can just keep scrolling through those. It's, um, if you want to, I'll just keep scrolling through those. Uh, as you can tell, people started just filling up the walls and using it uh, as a way to uh, express, look, hold it right there. You, as you can see, it says, proud to be white, which, one of the things is it gave everybody a voice. Uh, there, were, there were points when people told me they had the conversation, uh, they were writing Black Lives Matter and someone was writing All Lives Matter on the wall. And they actually had a conversation about what, what, what All Lives Matter meant to them and what Black Lives Matter meant to, them, to themselves. And uh, they didn't agree, but they had that conversation. So it created this sort of, this connection point where people could leave a message, take a message, understand someone else's voice. 
uh, I had many people tell me, you know, when entering the space, I could actually feel, I could feel what was going on. I could feel the energy. I could feel, I could feel the, the tension. I could feel the weight. I could also feel the energy. I can also feel the upliftment that can happen. So this became, uh, this is actually one of, uh, I would say, I, I'll, I'll be bold enough to say this, one of Western New York's largest uh, art installation. It's actually an art installation. And um, it, it, it now created, as you can see, people began chalking all over the place and creating their own messages and their, and their connection points, which was very, very important. And talking about how art can be a monument and how it can be a movement place. So now the place also became a gathering spot. There were, there were folks who, who come together and actually do, uh, were doing concerts. Uh, other folks came in and painted uh, murals on the wall. Uh, there were there were fashion shows. There were oh this one right here I got to talk about this. Uh, this is actually a summer reading list right there. That's it's very interesting. And uh, there's nothing. Uh, somebody cut me off. Sorry. Oh sorry I don't know I don't know if somebody's talking or they order at McDonald's and whatever they probably didn't drive through. So this summer reading list uh, was written up there and I thought this was very interesting. So if you click on the next one I think should, the next one should be there. Um, what happened is the library saw the reading list posted on the social web and they put those books inside of a free library that I created above MLK Park to distribute those to people. So this is where art, a movement, can actually move in other directions to help educate, to help inform, to help connect people. Uh, you can keep going, scrolling through there. Uh, and this is where I, I find it very important. So this place became, can you play that? Just so you folks can see what it looked like. So it's, it was, uh, it's probably gonna play slow, but it was actually uh, two days to actually do this. The first day, once again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, talking about Amanda, sometimes it takes our, 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 our black women to get things going. Uh, the first day that I started painting the walls, uh, majority of the people that were painting were black women. I would have to say 90% of them were. Uh, they brought their, their sisters, they brought their kids, uh, they brought their grandchildren and helped me paint those walls. And Amanda was there too, I believe. <laughs> Amanda did show up as well. And so uh, it Grab took- goddaughter. Those, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you were. And it took those hands to get this completed uh, and to cover this bowl, which took over a uh, hundred uh, gallons of paint to cover this black paint. Uh, but it became a voice and, and a connection point for people. And so while, while I would visit from time to time and saw that you know people were bringing their kids and and what really wanted to create that message. I only put the chalk out one time and the rains came, but miraculously through some sort of manna that fell from the sky, uh, chalk manna, uh, they, the walls became <laughs> covered again and again and continue to be covered. And talking about monument and movement, how that can affect uh, a space, the city realized that it was a connection point. You can you skip ahead past that. And uh, they actually just won an award for that, for painting it black even though i was the guy that did it but they had an award for that and also they understand that it could actually keep going they understand the benefits so they asked me what it, what is it, what are the colors what were the stains what did you use and um it actually affected how people use the park they realized people were going there after dark so the city actually installed more light so people could be engaged in that process so you can actually create uh, you can create this sort of monument, this movement, this connection point where people can find themselves, can find others, and really make things happen. You can stop sharing the screen if you don't mind. Thank you very much. I appreciate that because I'm just going to talk and run in there and talk. And one of the other things that I wanted to create is uh, I think that people themselves become the work of art, become the monument, the placement uh, to tell a story. They can, they can actually support and tell a story. So while working on uh, MLK Park, um, I realized that you know everyone you know was was supporting Black Lives Matter and um, we're using BLM on everything and I and I looked at our logo and I felt we need we need something to identify Rochester's Black Lives Matter to identify our own personal movement connection to monument our our own movement and so then I created this this logo which has been uh, 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 purchased which has been used on other things which 
it's a great, it's also great when you see something you create on something else that you didn't create. So it was awesome to actually see that. So I was glad that people actually use it on the other things. I've gone to Wegmans, I've seen people on the street. I was like, hey, where'd you get that from? They're like, I don't know, my brother gave it to me. I was like, that's awesome because you're spreading the message. It wasn't something that I sent to them, but it was great. So it's one of those things where you can walk around with this on your shirt or, or in your hat and it identifies Rochester. This be, now you become the monument. Now you become the movement. And one of the key things that, uh, which I just realized the other day when I was addressing an audience, uh, but it, it's always because the, the universe will give you what you want. It will give you divine intervention and, and lead you where you need to go. That when you wear your shirt, it actually places your hand on your heart, which connects you to your ancestry, which connects you to the heart of the Black Lives Matter movement, which connects you to the movement of abolitionists, which connects you to those forefathers and foremothers that came from the continent to create this country. It always connects you by your heart. So you're a walking monument. You're a walking story to actually tell who you are and what you are. You have to understand that these people dreamed about you. Even though the dream was furry and they couldn't see your face completely, you are living someone else's dream. And you, what you dream today, will be someone else's present monument. So, I, and I hope that I hope this makes sense or connections as to uh, monuments being a connect. I, I feel that some ways, shape and form, they don't have to be these, these solid sculptural pieces, but they can. But I think it should uh, uh, connect with the people as I showed you earlier with the Douglas piece. Or they can be spaces, pl places and spaces that are activated. But in time, they do need to shift. They do need to change. I think you have to address, you can't keep holding up a statue of a, of a, of a, of a slave holder and, a, and an oppressor uh, um, and uh, you know, someone who was beating women. You can't, you can't continue to keep that up when people are not having that shit anymore. You gotta, you gotta be like, all right, we gotta change the tide of the community. Sometimes you, got, you gotta sweat. Right? So again, with, and uh, I wish I had, uh, I didn't want to talk about these sort of monuments that were here in this book, you know, where people would go and take photographs and say, I love Rochester because that is now gone. And uh, it's not that that building is not about um, not about the artwork that's on it. It's about a, a, a man's livelihood and his business. So I felt that not to be right to talk about that now. Uh, so, yeah, I hope I said something. I don't know what the hell I was talking about, but uh, <laughs> I hope, I hope I gave you some information. So I'm going to turn it over to Arturo. I'm going to mute myself and uh, I'm going to have some water because I need to drink some water. Drink some water. Stay hydrated. So I just wanted, what I wanted to present, um, I want to share my screen again. Uh, so let me go through that. But uh, what I wanted to share was just, just um, it was part of the Hinge project. Um, which uh, Sean was a, um, is a part of him and uh, Suzanne and uh, hi Suzanne who's uh, in the audience. Shout so, out to um, Suzanne yeah. Mayer, my partner. <laughs> Love, you. Love you. So um, it is it is a uh, um, my and um, I am an artist too because once I, I'm taking a picture, I am creating um, art uh, as well. But I am when you're at a at a place and you're documenting what's happening. <laughs> Um, which right here, um, this Lewis Street wall is, uh, it's just a wall, um, Lewis Street, uh, I still call it a rec center, but it was, uh, the, the wise, uh, child care center at the time. Um, but from when I grew up, it was a, it was a rec center. And you got, you see the basketball court right there. Um, um, there's people that, that enjoy the park that's there, um, every day. So this center is important to the people in uh in the neighborhood and it's a connection that we we didn't realize like uh just you know the hinge um and talking to people they they realized how important the facility was uh even though it wasn't being used utilized um the same way just the building itself was there so that um when everything started as far as this this mural that was going to go on the side of this wall there are people driving by, like, what are you doing over there? And they're calling their, you know, previous uh, neighbors that used to live there. Hey, they're doing something over here. They're, they're, you need to come by. Like, so we have people driving by who used to live in the neighborhood just to see what, what's happening. Um, and so these, uh, in this picture here, um, this is Sean working. Um, these are some kids that, that worked at the Y um, who are volunteering to, to help uh, put this mural together. But 
uh, the projects also started including the neighborhood, like uh, other people, the people that live there um, came by to help um, paint as well. And uh, the, uh, while you're documenting the process of the creation, it you you see like once it's up there it's like well why wasn't something there before like it's just you just get that feeling like we should have always had something there because it was just this was just a plain wall but now once once you see something there it's like something should always be there even if it's something new even if you paint over it because it, because it is paint and you paint over it um it feel once you make that place once you activate it as sean says now it's like something should always be there and I guess with the chalk um, walls, that's how people felt. The, the rain washed things away. It's like, we gotta put some new stuff up there. We gotta put the messages back up there. And, and hopefully, you know, things like that maintain a legacy, um, which is, you know, uh, where it just keeps flowing, it keeps going. And people don't forget to, to go back to it. Um, so this is uh, like some um, kids that live in the neighborhood. Uh, they're, 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 they can always, their parents can always say that they help. Um, as soon as you put paint on, it's on. So they did help. Like they, they may not have painted the whole letter, but they did um, help in there or a part of it. Um, and then as we're shooting, um, as we're, this was going on and I'm shooting, like it starts to rain. So that's why the court is wet now. So we had to take a break. Um, the rain passed. But I'm documenting also the process, the the progress that is going on, and and from this picture right here, it's just like you you can tell us now we're going to say Lewis, but it's like well, what's the rest? What what else is going to be there? Um, and everything is mostly in his head. Like he he's got the sketch <laughs> on the wall, the the outline, but the idea is still in his head. So everybody's still trying to figure out what's happening and and what what's this going to be. Um, so then we got a second group of volunteers. The first group, you know, their shift was over. Got a second group of volunteers. And so you have more people, more, more hands. Um, things start to shape up. And then um, with a lot of Sean's projects, just, just seeing it, because I come there um, helping, but a lot of times I'm just observing. So from my point of view, I, I get to see the gambit of where there's a crowd, where it's, where it's hectic. Everybody just throwing paint everywhere. Everybody just around. And then you got a whole bunch of quiet moments at the end where you got to do the actual detail work. And then it's just Sean and, and the, the couple of workers that he has. And that's when, you know, everything's got to get done. Like we, we're trying to finish it, but the, uh, it's like everything just gets peaceful. Um, and it, that's just something I observe. Um, and then as you finish up, things start to shape up. And now you start to see like, oh, that, this is what it's gonna be. So for this project, even with more people um, coming in and helping out, um, you still have to end up and finish it yourself with the, with the final group. Now the, the black spot on the um, end, um, part of Sean's plan was to have the neighborhood um, come and sign their name. So this is the, the finished project from that day. But then the neighborhood comes um, on another day. We had a, a opportunity for them to come and assign the wall. So this was just uh, this is a video of it. So this this is this is an example of 
you know, the stories that I captured, um, you know, talking to people. I was, I was documenting um, this event, but also I was trying to ask people like what they want to see for the future, but people also were reminiscing because they, they can't, these are people that they, they lived in the neighborhood and they came, some people they, they haven't seen in a while, but they still communicate. It's a, it's a tight knit community. Even after they leave there, they, they still communicate with each other. And uh, that, that, that day showed that there was a lot where like I use the word legacy, like where the things that happen in the neighborhood, they still care about. And, and um, I know you've got this new project that you want to on campus to put up. Um, and some of what we would like to impart is that there, you want to do something that would make you want to come back and see what people are doing there or have a, have a spot to make, because you, you know, the students will be gone in two to three years, you'll, you'll be moved on to other stages in life. But what will make you come back to find out what is happening or what will make somebody that graduated from the school come back and, and find out, oh, they're doing this. I want to be there for, for this, this unveiling, for this, this signing, this whatever event that you have around it. Um, and that's how important this mural we didn't realize, but that's how important this became to the people that, that were in this neighborhood. Um, and, and so that, that's, that's just one thing uh, art can do. But the place, the place was always there. They just weren't using it in that way. Um, so the art just brought back those memories, brought back that um, let's come here that, um, to the place. And, and now they have something that they can be proud of. Um, one of the other topics I wanted to go over um, just is, is about documenting when you're there. Um, so when you're doing something there at a, at a location in front of art, like it's easy to just uh, take pictures in front of, say, a mural. Um, but like if people are actually doing things act like uh, with uh, Sio Street, there were people doing yoga in the park that was right there. There are people um, coming to do the writing. So they're, they're taking pictures or they're um, of what they're doing. And uh, that's important too, because that, that spreads the message of what's happening here, that this is an activated place. Um, going back to the MLK Park, um, all the things that happened there and people seeing it just brought, brought more attention, which brought more people, which brought more people writing and, and coming just to read. Uh, I saw people that worked there come in the middle of the day just to read what, what new stuff was up for the for the day, like what they hadn't seen previously. So it's an important thing um, where the message and the activity becomes the art, not the actual physical uh, physical thing that's created. And it's all part of the process. I mean, uh, my, my presentation is much shorter, <laughs> but, it, but it is to, uh, to me it's to a point because I'm, a lot of times I am just a viewer. Um, right now, because I'm not creating a big piece and I'm a participant in these, these things and I'm seeing the effects on people and it's important. Like it, it, we don't real, but it's one of those things you don't realize it until it's there. When it's not there, um, it's, it doesn't feel as important, and when, but it is important when it's taken away. But now that's just because it, you have the memories of it, but it, it's, the memories are what you did there not just of it. And, and that's what's going to be important, the, the things that you did there and those memories of those things, because the art could change, the message of the art could change, but it's important to, to keep those, uh, those, those memories and, and those things alive. And that's what video does and that's what pictures do. So that's my, my synopsis. <laughs> that's my, my view of public art. Um, so I, I guess we can open up to questions. I would, I, would argue, I would argue two points. First being that it is easy to give a presentation that is shorter than Sean's presentation. No, no matter what Sean is presenting on, it's easier to go shorter than Sean. <laughs> um, okay. And then, and then also, I would argue that even, even documentary is, is a really important kind of art. Um, yeah. I, there, there isn't always access to space. There isn't always um, the ability to get from A to B. And, and like 
I, I said in the chat while Sean was talking, I'm so grateful that um, Sean's murals on Mark's building are, are part of the project, uh, are part of the book project and that you were able to, to have those images and, and that that tiny little bit of time that those existed for and, and, and the reason that they were made and the reason that the project was started were all so closely connected to each other that I'm really glad that they all exist together. And, and that wouldn't happen without, and, and I mean, I know lots of people took pictures and plenty of people even took pictures of Sean at those murals, but that they're in this project specifically, I think is a really special thing. Well, I think with my approach with the pictures, which became way more important later because of what happened to the building, was that I, I wanted him to just be in front of the murals, but the murals weren't the focus. That, that was my whole thing. So a lot of the pictures that I don't have the whole um, image of the mural, like, like the ones he's holding up, like it's not the, him and the whole thing. Um, this one, it's the whole thing, but it's what he's doing in front of it that's important. Um, uh, but a, a lot of the pictures, it's not the take a picture of the whole thing. This one in particular with the words, I don't have the whole thing there. It, the, the work was going to be the background um, because I, I was focusing on him as a person, um, even to the point where I've got the one picture that he's, he's just sitting there looking at it. it, it but you're, the, the focus is him looking at his work. Um, so I, I wanted that to be important because it, it doesn't matter what is there because he could, we could have changed that the next day. It's just the fact that it exists. The, the fact that Mark, um, allowed that because of the reaction the community had where, um, he's affected people who aren't his customers, um, coming in, you know, cause that's, you know, you're running your business. That's who you primarily are concerned with. But you're actually impacting the neighborhood and people just walking by, which that's a highly walked area. But just being out there when Sean's working on 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 them, uh, you just get lots of people going back and forth. There's a parking garage right across the street. You don't realize so people have to walk to the garage to get to their car. So they're they're seeing this every day, and and there's people that are going to. Um, various uh, restaurants and places downtown, and they're seeing it. So you don't realize you're impacting people every day with, with these messages. And so the capturing it be, just became that much more valuable. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, that we did it that way and, and that we, we chose that as the focus because, because it is gone. Um, but there'll be something new there. So uh, because of the, Mark, is, Mark is going to make sure that there's something new there and that's, that's important. Oh yeah, we're working on something. I got to figure out what that's going to be. <laughs> I know. So if there are any, I don't know what, what what's our next step, Amanda? Yeah, I was going to say. Oh, I know my life gonna is going to die. Be questions in here, and I'm sure that other folks who aren't students also have questions. So you can ask them now. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how to uh, like raise hands, chat. I don't know if you if they're gonna type them and you read them. Uh, how do you normally do it, or have you done it this way? We we do it this way, and we kind of let them either use the raise hand icon, which will let me see that someone is actually trying to get attention, or um, put them right in the chat and I can read them out. Or you can unmic and ask. Okay. Uh, Zoe asks for Sean. Um, were you ever surprised by volunteer or public supports with your art? And how did that make you feel about your art and yourself? Uh, could you repeat that? Sorry, oh, my, light, uh, my light's flashed. Could you repeat that? Because I was like doing something with <laughs> Zoe asked, were you ever surprised by volunteer or public support with your art? And how did that make you feel about your art and yourself? Okay, public support. That's that's one of the things that I really like to have. I don't know if you mean by public support, literally just like people painting, but I'll, I'll address that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go that way. It's really important. That's one of the things that I really like to have is public engagement. I really feel like um, 
I want people engaged. I don't want people to think that art making or place making or place activation or beautifying your city is in the hands of someone else. It's literally in your own hands to shape your own future. So I try to make most projects, unless I'm on a lift or something, uh, I try to make most projects people friendly so they can actually always try to create some days so that folks can come and join me in paint. So I set it up whether you're three or 93 or actually 83, I've actually had an 83 year old come out and help me paint, uh, that you can actually join in and pick up a brush and paint. Uh, because I think that's important to one's character and it's important to the community to say, hey, I can actually change this. Uh, one of the key, uh, one of the things was uh, many projects, but I'll talk briefly about the fruit belt project that I did on Jay and Grape, uh, which in 2012 and in 2013 uh, was the seventh most dangerous neighborhood in America. Um, and based on a project I saw in Philadelphia, I go every year to look at their mural work, uh, I wanted to create something that can we create change in a neighborhood. And so uh, uh, with public participation, I went on news media, I went on outlets, I went on Facebook, all these things. I said, hey, people, come and help me paint. Uh, but some of these key things, uh, there, are, there, are a lot of wheels, there are a lot of wheels that happen behind the scenes of things. Uh, you know, when Arturo talked about, I'm going to go back to Fruitbelt as well. When Arturo talked about, you know, the Sile Street thing, uh, it, it looks great. Everybody's out there painting. But the two days before, there were people storming in and calling City Hall and saying, hey, this can't happen. We're going to stop this. It cannot happen. Not understanding what it could be. But the next day, they're there signing the wall uh, and, and, and enjoying it. So uh, going back to, once again, participation is important. This is where I learned the value of public participation and what the, what, the, what, the outer, what the outer rings actually are, what can actually happen. Um, so uh, I, I put this call out, bringing people to the seventh most dangerous neighborhood in America uh, in 2012, 2013, uh, to paint two buildings. But with that, I reached out to the, the community and I actually went door to door and said, hey, we're painting. Uh, the two buildings I were painting were a corner store and college, uh, uh, college club of uh, uh, beverage, uh, which is uh, where they actually make fizz, you know, soda, if you've seen that around town, locally made, has been made there for 97 years. Um, and so uh, I, I reached out participation. I said, hey, I'm having this painting day. You, uh, fire department, can you come out since you're right around the corner? Um, I reached out to uh, the, the, the rhinos at the time, the soccer team. I said, hey, your stadium's right here and the back of it faces a community that they don't even, most people don't even come to. You better show your face in this community. I actually reached out to Zweigels as well, but they never got back to me, but that's a whole other issue. Um, I reached out to community folks. I said, hey, uh, a friend of mine, Cameron, who owns Daily Refresher in the city, I said, hey, uh, I like your food. Could you bring a food truck down? Uh, he didn't really, his, he has, his unit is not mobile. He's like, ah, I really can't take it, but let me see what I can do. Uh, and so he called me an hour later and said, hey, man, I just bought a truck so I can take this thing to your event and get food. So now we've got, we've got community people engaged. We've got folks coming. I had Sherman Williams volunteers. We put this call out, right? It's 9 o'clock in the morning. I said, 9 o'clock, here it is. Folks come. It's a little rainy and it's cold um, and no one's showing up. And I'm like, oh, this is scary. How am I going to get this accomplished with all this hype? But around the corner, the troops at like, you know, 905, the troops from Sherman Williams come around. Uh, folks start trickling in to the neighborhood, uh, which uh, one of the guys from, I, gotta say, I have to always tell the story. One of the guys from Sherman Williams came into the neighborhood. He was wearing a bulletproof vest. He really <laughs> wore a bulletproof vest to come paint. Uh, I was like, dude, it's not that serious. Calm down. Uh, but participation can happen. And so part of the, the public participation is about buzz. It's about creating new identity. It's about creating that, that connection. So the point of the Fruit Belt Project was getting people there so that no one feels afraid and this neighborhood could be rebranded and people will always come. Uh, and so throughout the course of the day, I had about 350 people come out and paint and clean up and sweep in a neighborhood where, where they would never come to prior to. Uh, and I realized the importance of participation. That's why I always try to do that. And from that spun off, a whole myriad of other things. We created a fruit garden. <laughs> uh, we created a seltzer, a fruit belt seltzer, because I figure if these guys are making seltzer, why don't we grow the fruit in the neighborhood? And if people are talking about being hungry, let's grow free food. Why don't we grow free food? Why are there fruit trees that people can eat? Why are, we, why are people hungry? Uh, but that's all I have to have. I have a whole nother talk about the Fruit Belt Project, so I won't get into that. But public participation is valuable. I realized that when we painted the piano keys at the, at the, at the crosswalk of Main and East Main across from Eastman Theater, uh, just folks came from everywhere, which then got us attention from the, I uh, forget what, whatever national publication picked it up. But um, it's, it's just great to have people engaged. And I, 
I, I try to set it up. So I try to set it, I'll, I'll stop talking. I try to set it up so that people can do it. So public engagement is very important to the process because it actually informs me. And when people are paint, painting with me, I literally say, oh, well, yeah, Wall Street Journal. <laughs> One of the, Wall Street Journal was one of another thing. But I tell folks, hey, uh, if you've been working on this spot for an hour, as Arturo said earlier, you know, I've kind of got a blueprint in my head, but you've been painting this, this area for an hour and you say to me, I think this letter B should be purple. I will take your word for it and I will tell you to paint it because you have been engaged in that process more than I have. I'm just thinking about it. You're physically looking at it and seeing it. And so public participation actually inspires and creates the artwork itself. And I will literally leave it there. Not know that's where it's important. That's why I draw from the people. So I hope that answers your question. Next question Sorry. for Sean was, what was- I, I like to run. I like to run too long. You know, you know I like to run my mouth, man. It's all right. <laughs> I like to hear myself talk. I like to think I, I'm a professor. I know how to profess. <laughs> Next question for Jean was, what was the biggest impact you have seen coming from your art? That's a, that's a, that's a really good question. I mean, um, um, I, I won't say, because uh, once again, art is just something you look at or whatever else you engage in, you sing a song, you do a poem. One of the things is how it, I, the, the important part is what it does with people. What it does with people, I think, is important. I think that's an important thing. And I, I'm going to talk about, even though I had, I, I had, I did two seconds worth of work on this project, uh, but the, it, which also gained national, national attention, uh, is a John Lewis mural that we have downtown on State Street. Um, and you know, uh, thanks to folks like uh, 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 Ian Wilson and Sarah Rutherford. Ian Wilson also, if if you folks have heard of, once again, it's talk about black creators. Um, if you, if any of you are familiar with wall therapy, that's actually a black man's design and he created Dr. Ian Wilson created wall therapy, just so you know that, uh, <laughs> just so you understand that, that the black people are the creators of the culture that you consume. Um, so, uh, what, what, one of the, one of the important parts was actually my, my apprentice who worked with me on the food belt project. He just came just to get a job. Ephraim, uh, Gervais, Ephraim Gervais. He came back. He said, I want to give back because I learned how to give back. So I want to give back to my community and paint that mural. They did a crowdfunding, they did a crowdsource funding for it and painted that mural. So those are the things that I think are important. When you've actually worked alongside someone, that's why uh, when I talk about people in this interactivity, you know, it's never, it's never about, I'm never trying to give back, all right? So if I'm working as well, I'm not trying to give back because if I'm trying to give back, that means you're always behind me. But when we're side by side working on a wall or working on a project, we're moving together. That's the important part of moving together. So that's what I enjoy. That's what I think. I, 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 the art is important, but I really don't give two dams about that. I do, but I don't. I, don't. Don't get me wrong. What I care about is the connectivity. That's what's important. When strangers can actually have a conversation, all right, and can talk to one another, that's what's important. They're doing that over art, and they will come back to it, but they will remember that conversation with the stranger that they had side by side. On a, on, a, on a working on a vision that they can't see the whole picture, but they're willing to work on their small part and actually engage with the person next to them. That's what's important. That's where movement comes. That's where movement comes when you can actually do the small portion next to someone else without seeing the big picture. It's like a tapestry, you know, that thread doesn't know what it's going to be, but when it steps, when you step back, it becomes a beautiful tapestry. I hope I answered your question because I like to run my mouth. Uh, that reminds me of Kit, that song, look at your life. Look at your life through, oh, you ever seen that? Uh, <laughs> the Prince of Egypt, and he talks about the tapestry. Never mind. Look at your life. Just look at your life. <laughs> Moses, the story of Moses. Look at your life through heaven's eyes. Sorry, go ahead. How has your public art been affected by the pandemic, says Michael. Has it been harder for you to access or make use of public spaces to create art due to COVID regulations? Is the public response slowed due to COVID and quarantine? Uh, we, as some of the slides that our tool showed, we have, uh, we try to make sure, and Suzanne was there, and we try to make sure we have the, the protective material, we try to keep people spaced. Um, and in that particular project, when people were signing, we were trying to do waves of signing. So we, we, we work along that structure. So I'm actually doing projects in other, other areas of uh, other counties, actually. And I'm setting up structures of timed engagement. Uh, like one of the participants who worked on that uh, Lewis Street mural was uh, my principal, uh, my high school principal uh, years ago. And she, it was a great experience to meet her. And she's, she's I think she's, uh, she's 82 years of age. And so we had to make sure that we had everything set up 
uh, and she was actually attended at Lewis Street. So we always try to set up preparations of hand sanitation, wearing masks. That was one of the key things. Uh, luckily, uh, Suzanne is on top of that to make sure those things happen um, uh, because both both uh, her and her husband are, are great citizens and her, their husband's a physician and she's a great uh, thinker and conscious of we need to take care of folks. And uh, she always says, where's your ass? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to I want to so, add that uh because it's outside that that makes it a lot easier um because then you just have to deal um kind of with the mass and you still deal with, deal with the spacing but it's a lot easier the fact that th those murals were outside that and uh even the even for the MLK park it's the that area is huge so people could be spaced apart and and not have to be um some of the gatherings that happened later you know people weren't you know with the protests and things like that, but that those are the risks that those people chose to take. But the actual art and, and participating in reading, like it, it, it just had plenty. He had plenty of space for people to space out and not be around. Anymore. So that those that kind of art being outside makes it a lot easier. Yeah, um, Suzanne had a question. An artist opens themselves up to constant criticism. How do you deal with that? and keep your projects on focus and keep your sense of humor. I know Suzanne's not gonna have a question. What is she ask? <laughs> An artist opens themselves to constant criticism. How do you deal with that and keep your projects on focus and keep your sense of humor? All right, gotcha, gotcha. How do I keep the project? Well, it's, it's like any project you have to, I would say me personally, you know, uh, I've had artists who, who work along with me and they're like, or who come across and said, I don't know how you can let other people, you know, be engaged in that, just painting your painting. I'm like, well, it's not really my painting. If, if I'm putting it in the public realm, it belongs to the people. Uh, so let the people be a part of that. Um, and you always, you're always going to catch criticism. You're always going to catch flack. I mean, that's, that's part of the game. The part of the game, when you put something in the public realm, if the public has a say, they're going to say something about it. And that light just went out on me. They're going to say something about it. That's just, that's a given. Um, as we talked about, as I said earlier with, with Lewis Street, folks are like, no, oh, shut it down. These are people who live across the street from, we don't want it. And then, you know, a few days later, like, oh no, that was the most beautiful thing that actually happened. And I'm glad that happened. And thank you very much. Uh, even painting the, the, the piano keys on, on Main Street. We only needed sign off for people that we could close off the street, you know, from institutions on the four corners. Three of those corners uh, were, were owned by a particular institution, which actually didn't want to sign off on it. Uh, they were worried about the maintenance. They were worried about this. I'm like, it's a public street. You don't actually own the street. Why are you worried about maintaining it? What are you, what are you trying to stop? It makes no sense to me. Uh, it's city owned. We just need your permission to shut it down. Um, until and sometimes you've got to, uh, when you're getting that kind of pushback, you've got to find your avenues to, 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 to connect. So with Lewis Street, through the pushback, we found out there was a whole other group that we could connect with and create the reunion uh, group. With the piano keys, we realized that if we go after their pockets, if we say, you know, the people who are funding this are actually some of your major funders, uh, and we tell them that you don't want to fund this, that's going to kind of make it look bad. Uh, and they're like, okay, we'll, we'll do it. You can do it, you can do it. Uh, but then in the end, uh, once again, with those piano keys, that institution ended up using it in their literature, their brochures, their information, once it hit national attention and they wanted to claim it as such. It, it, it actually, uh, just, just talking about those piano keys, it actually brought attention to uh, our jazz fest as well uh, because of the national attention about painting on the, on the keys. Uh, it brought attention to a jazz fest as well. So. Um, and I'm not talking about myself, but that was more about the community, community coming together. The story was about community coming together. So that's, that's how you do it. You, you've got to find the, the pushback is going to come, but you got to, when, the, when they're pushing, all right, right. The problem, I tell everybody, I, I say it all the time. I said, if there's a problem. The problem is you creating a problem. So if we can find out what, what your issue is, can we just, can we just, can we just spin that around? We deflect it, you know, it's like, it's like karate kid. Can we deflect this sort of thing and push that energy in that direction? Uh, you're going to have to do that. There's always going to be a big wave of resistance, but your surfboard's got to be ready to ride it and redirect yourself. Uh, that it, it's accommodating to everyone, and you always got to laugh throughout it because otherwise, people don't see you when you're crying at night. That's a whole other story. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, 
question from Ethan, um, really insightful here, with a note of seeing someone coming to assist the, with a project with a bulletproof vest on. Have you ever felt, especially during one of your BLM projects, that you or others or the effort itself was being threatened instead of welcomed? No, no, because people are, people are curious. Um, people are curious. And so curiosity will, will, in my experiences, when people are curious, it will, it will overcome people's fear. If I came in storming into any neighborhood saying, this is what I'm going to do, and uh, don't look at this. If I closed it off and no one could see what was going on and I started doing something, people are like, what the hell are you doing? Uh, but when they can see the project, they see the process, they see this guy's got paint. They're like, what you doing? You finna paint something? Uh, what's going on? People are curious. People are curious as to what's going on in the neighborhood. Uh, just like Arturo was helping document uh, during the pandemic at the, the city I went out and did, I spray painted um, uh, skeletons on the sidewalk uh to say you know six feet apart or six feet under and i sort of use this skeleton and we put these remy bottles there were, uh, uh, there were outlines of remy bottles and flowers and teddy bears because a lot of times within urban environments i'll say black communities uh when folks are, have been killed uh they set up you know everybody has a drink uh you put it out there you put your roses out your teddy bears your balloons and so i wanted to, to actually um get that message out because we realized there was a message from the county but most of the cats that are out doing their business or just hanging out ain't listening to what Dr. Felchie's saying. So there's gotta be a different way to reach people. So you go to the, you go to the neighborhood, you go to the hood, lay it out. Nobody's like, yo, don't be spraying the sidewalk. They're like, yo, what you doing, man? Oh, that's a skull. Oh shit, that, what you doing? They're interested. People are curious that what you're doing. There's a dude spray painting on the sidewalk with this <laughs> big respirator on his face. And even in, the, even in the hoods and in some of the areas where you think people would be like, yo, you know, as you talk about being worried, people are like, yo, can you do that? The city let you do that? <laughs> so it's like even being empowering to be like, yes, this is my job. This is what I do. I'm doing this for the city. So it's one of those things where, no, I haven't ever, uh, even when I've traveled, uh, uh, traveled to other countries to paint, uh, and we actually painting, uh, we're, we're, uh, case in point, we're painting, we went to Brazil as part of our food project. Uh, we went to Salvador, Brazil. And uh, I was trying to get my stuff in order and protect it and everything. The bank's like, no, we can't protect your car at all because you're going to one of the highest crime areas in the world. Uh, <laughs> and so when you step into that community and there's these favelas, it's, it's a lot going on. Uh, but when you come in and you're painting, you're doing stuff, people are engaged. And, and one, of the, one of the great neighbors in the, in, the, in the favela was this guy who kept, you know, bringing us wine. Uh, it was great. <laughs> it's 90 degrees, but we're drinking wine. Uh, but it was great, and people come and they get engaged because they, they see you doing something positive. If I was doing something negative, if I was trying to, inf and, and if I was handing out pamphlets or tracks or anything like that, then people were like, "Yeah, I get the hell out of here." But because they see you doing something, people most more than likely, 99% of the time, no one's ever threatened me or anything like that, except for my camera crew that was following me. They told them, "You better move that camera because the drug guys are going to come and take it. They're going to grab your ass and they're going to take that camera." And that was people walking up and down the street in Brazil. So he had to actually put that away. Uh, but otherwise, me painting the wall wasn't a problem. I uh, hope that answered your questions. Do we have time for one more? Look at your life. You bet. Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, Ryan's in chat and says, Sean, your murals and interactive installations at the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Park are magnetic, but just a few blocks away in Washington Square Park across from Jiva stands an imposing monument to the soldiers and sailors, which features Abraham Lincoln and Union military as emancipators. Do you feel your installation directly expands on that finalized narrative? Um. That's a, that's a damn. That was a good question. How do I how do I answer that? Uh, well, I'll I'll answer that in a way. I'll answer that in a way where I wanted to counter that. Literally, this is what was going to happen, but we still have to get to that. So uh, along that stretch, there's the, when I talked about the um, uh, the free libraries, I upcycled uh, some old USA Today newspaper stands. All right, and it's all part of Playwalk. So Playwalk extends from the public library across uh, Washington Square Park to MLK Park. So one of the things, uh, but once again, you get resistance and it didn't happen. But one of the things is the cannon that's out there, okay? 
And so one of the, the installations we wanted to do were these, these domes, these colorful domes. They were gonna be red and purple and green. Uh, they were seats, but they were active play that you can jump across, okay? So that gets kids engaged in a process. Also part of what we were talking about in, in Play Walk, because working with teens, teens who were at the library, they wanted history installed along the walk. So one of the points we were actually gonna talk about is some of the historical things that happened in that park on a placard, right? Uh, in that park uh, from those, those, those women, uh, uh, brown folks, or the, when I say brown people, that includes anyone uh, with, 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 with some slight, well, there we got mental image again, but not from, uh, again, I don't wanna exclude those folks. We're not talking about white guys, old white guys, all right? <laughs> to put it that way, because, all right, we've, we've heard his story for too damn long. Uh, and so that was actually supposed to be there. So it was actually sort of a message to, I'm, I don't want to say counter, but just give an, a, another narrative to that monument that stands there because we did understand people are gathering, they're having lectures, they're talking here. Let's give them some other information that they can gather. Uh, that's still in the works to happen. So um, the MLK Park wasn't a direct response to that. There was actually something I was working on to have a direct response to that monument in its place. So hope that answers your question. Well, thank you very Just much. Just look at your life. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we have um, recordings of all of Sean's wonderful uh, serenades today. <laughs> hey, I saw but, you had a picture of the mural. You had, where was that mural you took the picture at? Oh, uh, that was at a restaurant in Buffalo last year. Gotcha. All right. Um, so I, I, I can't go on do, camera with my drink in my hand. I do unfortunately have to wrap up today and, and say thank you so much to our wonderful speakers, Sean and Arturo. We so appreciated having you. Um, and Amanda thank you. Chestnut, thank you so much for, for moderating, just doing a wonderful job. Um, thank you for your time and for sharing your knowledge and expertise. Uh, we want to thank our attendees also for joining us. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed listening and hopefully we're able to take away something that you can apply as you move forward in your journey of anti-racism. And don't forget that we have more events planned and hope that you'll join us for those events as well. And so I'm just going to put in the chat really quick the link to the events calendar. And thank you all so much and hope you have a wonderful weekend.